As one of my last audit video got a great feedback, here's another one, because I know you like this on Twitter. A one product e-com store scaled to 25k a day in spend in just four months after launching, but they recently started experiencing drop in their ROAS. I did a full audit of their ad account and found some massive mistakes and huge opportunities that could unlock their CPA to scale even more. So let's dive in. Okay, so here's the recap of numbers. I compared their numbers in May, June and July. We can see that spend was 6x from 4k to 25k which is really outstanding uh, when we check video metrics we can see that all metrics are dropping so we went from 48 42 38 for thumb stop ratio 44 43 38 in hold rate average watch time from 14 to just 10 seconds still these numbers are way above average so i would not be too worried about this but it's clearly a problem that these numbers are dropping if we compare traffic stuff so cpm is dropping as well but as we have less people starting to watch the video as we have less people watch the video we can see that by average watch time obviously it's impacting our click -through rate which dropped from 2.8 8 to 1.6 so our cpc is 50 cents higher because we have higher cpc that's impacting our cost per to card which is also more expensive as well as the cpa so all the brand has pretty good margins and target was between 1.5 and 2 uh, currently they are on the lower end of this one in terms of the conversion metrics so we can see that aov is currently at the best spot conversion rate drops slightly but not so much and frequency is a bit high so to recap of numbers Okay, video metrics are dropping, that's impacting our CPC cost per to card and CPA, so our ROAS is dropping, conversion rate is slightly down, but frequency is a bit high, but basically based on this level of spend on a monthly basis, it's not, it's not that big a problem. So let's dive into the campaigns. First thing that I noticed, there's over 30 campaigns active. So when I asked the clients why they did that, they said like basically they were just launching a new campaign for every new batch of ads that they were running. But for me, it doesn't make sense. You could run just one campaign with the multiple ads that's in an ABO. So first campaign, CBO, DC, new creatives targeting UK and US, both genders together, 18 plus using advantage plus audience so my question is how come usually i don't like to do all of my tests with advantage plus audience until i have a proof that's my best performing audience when i asked the client they said like they just use what was defaulted one i did notice that audience was doing a bit more retargeting so that's something i would not suggest to use client told me their main kpi is nc ross basically attracting new customers but when i checked the campaign there were no buyers exclusion when i asked the clients why they don't have any exclusion they said this is one of the old campaigns they didn't want to mess up. Also in Advantage Plus, it's kind of hidden where the exclusions are, so definitely be careful of that. So we had two ad sets. One was not spending anything. So probably that was an ad set that was added a bit later and it did not had like fair chance to beating the existing winner. So potentially I would definitely isolate that or run it in an ABO to give it a bit more spend to see whether I could get some additional winners. So some of the ads had like captions too high or too low. So basically all the those were like 9 by 16 videos those were cropped when showed on feed on 4 by 5 so definitely suggestion here is to have all the text not too high or not too low so basically within the safe zone so it does not get cropped in terms of the testing so there was not really any testing framework they were like totally different between three and eight creatives totally different ads totally different creators and angles so my question is like what you guys are even testing it just seemed like a lottery game let's launch something and hope that would work i had a question did they extract the post id they said they did the next question is ABO retargeting so here we had multiple countries not just US and UK and excluding buyers so that's a good approach but we had two ad set one was view content the other was video views but the bigger one video views was not excluding view content so basically these two were partially overlapping so my suggestion is either to run video views excluding view content and then have view content in another or just run bigger ones the second thing is that these audience were not excluded in prospecting so basically prospecting is overlapping with retargeting retargeting ad set one is overlapping with retargeting ad set two which makes no sense each ad set is using dynamic creative so basically every ad of yours is the same video but start from scratch so basically they use dynamic creative in ad set one and ad set two 
which were using the same ads. So if you actually check the post ID, those are the same ads, but starting with two different post ID, which basically means the ads are starting from scratch, both in Facebook eyes, both in users eyes. And we know that users are going to react to the ad with a lot of social proof and more. So this definitely does not make sense. You're crippling yourself. CBO feedback with the post ID. So here we had like terrible performance, but the budget was not decreased. It was actually increased, which was super strange. So when I checked last three days, last seven days, performance is terrible on both. So there's really no way this campaign should have been increased much. Also, when I check on the ad level, we had like more than 20 ads and like five of them were like below one. So there was no optimization on the ad level. So that's definitely something I would suggest. You need to cut bad ads on the ad level that actually maximizing the efficiency of your overall campaign. The next campaign CBO hubs. So like, I'm not sure what's the point of this setup. They had the same campaign for UK, US, then the same campaign for worldwide using the same ads. So basically, again, each of the ads was starting from scratch. So like, no wonder these creative metrics were dropping because each ad starting from scratch is like limiting yourself. Some cost caps campaign are barely spending, but the CPA was great. So basically here I noticed that the ROS was way above the target. Let's say their average was 1.66, but they these campaigns had like over two, but they were barely spending. So in this case, I would definitely increase the bid to give it a bit more room to actually spend more. Next campaign, um, ABO Hub. So here I noticed five different videos and five different ad sets. So basically each of the ad set had just only one ad, which to me is a hit or miss approach. You're forcing Facebook to spend the money on a specific variation. It makes no sense. Again, ads with not proper captions that are too high, that are cropped. So it definitely looks like a bad user experience if I see an ad like that in my feed. Terrible performance, but the budget was not increased. So it just seemed to me like a set and forget approach. And then we had this value lookalike campaign. First thing, there was no exclusion of buyers. The audience, that were tested were 1% lookalike, 3%, 5%, and 10%. But there was no exclusion. So it was not lookalike 1%. Then the second was between 1 and 3. And the third was between 3 and 5. No, it was 1, 3, 5, and 10. And basically, if you check the overlap between those, so lookalike 1% is overlapping 33% with lookalike 3%. Lookalike 3% is overlapping with lookalike 5%, 60%. Lookalike 5% is 50% overlapping with lookalike of 10%. So basically, although they had the different ad sets and a different audience, these audiences were like pretty much the same and they were massively overlapping. And again, huge mistake, ads not using the post ID. So basically each ad is starting from scratch. The last campaign, testing listicle. So basically I did notice some of the best ads leading to listicle. That's something that I like. If you cannot test uh, landing pages in a backend, this is a good approach. Basically, you take your existing winner ads and you point them to a new landing page and then you observe the performance. So some kind of recap of mistakes, definitely too many campaigns without uh, any reasons. Often there's no buyer's exclusion. Often there's a duplicated setup without a uh, reason, just different countries. Overlapping retargeting, overlapping retargeting with prospecting overlapping prospecting in terms of those lookalikes, no testing process at all, just like launching stuff, testing one ad per ad set, bad optimization, all of the ads active. So basically no matter the performance, budget was adjusted weirdly. So basically good campaigns were not increased the budget, like on cost cap, bad campaigns uh, had increased budget. In terms of the ads, often there's no post ID, captions were cropped, no variation when testing. Opportunities, Definitely fixing the mistakes from above because those are rookie mistakes. Proper testing framework with ABO tests where each new ad set is a new test with multiple variation. Definitely consolidation. I'm not a huge fan of like one campaign or something like that. But in this case, this is definitely needed because there were like over 20 campaigns. Focus on new customers because there's no exclusions here. Definitely try running Advantage Shopping Plus campaign because it was not active in this campaign. And maybe testing some additional audience with a couple of winners. I also compared the funnel uh, from these guys so we can see that click -through rate is pretty good. Page is loading pretty fast. People check around 1.5 pages per session. Checkout is not firing properly or at least add to cart is not firing properly because there's more checkouts than add to cart. So that's definitely something that I would double check. And then decent percent 
of people proceed from checkout to purchase. So you can see this is an account that's spending 25k a day and they still have a lot of rookie mistakes. Basically no exclusions, no optimization, no post IDs, not good increasing of budget when, they, when it's needed. So imagine if the ad account spending like this has huge opportunity to scale just based on this audit. If you're an e-com brand spending at least 50k a month and you want me to audit your ad account just like I did with this one, just apply for a free audit below. If you're not on that level yet, please like and subscribe for more useful content like this.